This is a flash bag for a four inch spider shell. I'm going to be making a dozen gold spiders and a dozen silver spiders and I'm going to show you my way of putting this flash bag together. I use this cutting machine from Ben Smith if I'm making more than one or two fuses. It's a really nice tool, heavy duty. It not only cuts the fuse accurately to within a sixty-fourth of an inch but it'll also split it straight down the center uh, for a half inch length so that you can cross match it or it'll punch a hole in it so you can cross match it. The machine really comes into its own when you want to do a ring of reports like this or something. Uh, these 24 reports I've put the fuses at exactly the same length but I could just as easily have made the first one a half inch long and the second a, a 64th longer and then a 64th longer making them a 64th longer in increments all the way from one end to the other. The cutter is very simple to operate, you just adjust your screw here like I said to get you the, the length you want. You would tighten this lock nut up so it doesn't slip. Bring the cutter down here and it cuts your fuse off nice and square, very very smooth. If you want to cross match it using uh, a hole to punch a hole in it, it punches a nice neat hole through it for you. If you want to cross match it, as I prefer to do by splitting the, the fuse and putting some black match in and then tying it back up again, it also puts a nice slit in it, half inch long from the end. Okay, I need to cut some fuse now for these spiderweb shells. They're four inch. I need ten of them. And with this time fuse, I need a second, an a inch and a quarter between the cross mark points. So I'm going to make the length of fuse here two and a quarter inches long. That'll give me a half inch at either end to cross match. There's two. Okay, two and a quarter. Now you just bring it down, push it through again. As I said, I, I don't like to punch fuse and cross match it. I like to split the fuse and put the cross match in. So I'm just going to split all of these at one end, half an inch. I don't know what kind of fuse this is, it's, it burns at about 2 seconds 60 an inch, but the powder cores very, very small on it. Okay, I'm going to save that one and just show you how I used to cut uh, split fuse before I had this beautiful cutting machine. I'm on my, my last flash bag now for this spiderweb shell, so I'll just show you how my, my way that I, I do this. I've got a piece of 30 pound craft paper. The paper's nine long, three and a half wide. The former here is seven eighths, seven eighths uh, OD. And I roll it up. This gives me three turns. I find if you try and get away with less than three turns of paper on it, what's likely to happen is that when you put the 
cut stars, the charcoal cut stars in your shell casing, they're pretty sharp, they might just puncture the bag and you'll end up with the flash powder not being in the flash bag anymore. So I, I like to do three turns, it makes it a little, little bit harder to tie it up but I think it's safer that way. Okay there's my little bag. Now I said I'd show you what I do with the fuse if I don't use Ben's time fuse cutter. This is the way I always used to cut fuse before. I, to cut it I'd actually put it on a block like this and measure it out and put a mark on it and then I'd rest the razor blade on it, cut a blade like this, a, bit, a bigger one than this, and then just give it a smart tap above the blade and it would cut it off perfectly. But to cross match it, the way I used to do it would be to just mark this one wants to be cross matched at a half inch from the end. There's my little mark for the half inch. I simply put the cutter blade in here, just center it on the end. It needs to be a nice new sharp one. And now just force it against the end of the, the fuse and at the same time rock it back, backwards and forwards and push this onto it as you rock it. If you start to go off center you can actually steer the blade and steer it back into the center of the powder core. Just rock it and push, rock it and push until you reach the center point there and then I just prise it apart to split it like that. Ok now my fuse is split. I came across this quick match some months ago and to my surprise when I ripped some of it out for something I discovered that it's full of these odd grey coated strands and they're kind of rubbery they're not at all like black match coated string and actually I don't like it I don't I don't use it in my cylinder shells in, in any way shape or form and I don't like it at all for for leaders. I find it burns it, it may burn hotter but it certainly burns a lot faster. It's almost explosive. I, I put some in a, a fountain once, a titanium fountain, length like this, six inches or so, just to light the fountain. And I lit it at the end and I, I barely got my hand away from the nozzle when the fountain took off and burnt my fingers. So it burns real fast and the only reason I'm using it here in this flashback is because it's perchlorate I believe and it burns a lot hotter than a black powder composition. So hopefully this will aid in making sure that the, the flashback does ignite. I put four strands in, just force the strands hard down to the bottom of the crack that you formed with your cutter blade, squeeze it together Again I use tarred string, this string I use on to tie the, uh, the cross matched fuse together is about half a millimetre, it's quite thin string. This is I believe Belgian flax, it's the strongest string I've ever come across, there's no way I can break it. Pull it really tight and you, you pull the split together like that, just give it another not to lock it off. Get rid of your excess string. Ok, now just bend your strands of black match away towards the end of the fuse here and insert them into your bag. Just put it about a, an eighth to a quarter of an inch inside the bag and then pinch it on the one side, pinch it on the other side, just like that, crumple it up and crumple it tightly, form a little collar around the fuse there. And then again, a tired string, just pop it over. teeth when I get old. Okay, just nice and tight, lock it off again. Cut the 
the ends off. Now take your end disc, insert it into the end disc, and just put a nice pool of Elmer's glue all around the fuse at the junction of the end disc, and then pull it down tightly into that pool of Elmer's. Okay, that seals it. And then what I like to do, because I haven't done this fuse as I do my other ones with a, with a red tube and put in the time fuse into my red tube, I take some some more tarred twine, I put a clove hitch along the top, pull it tight, now just push it down real tight against the, the end disc there and tighten it up. And using a cutter blade, just take off the edge there. And now I wind it round. The tar string really sticks well to itself. It, it, it adheres really nicely. And just keep turning it around until you form a widening circle of the twine down there around, around the bottom of the disc. It's pushed up really close to the disc and then just wind it a few more times nice and tightly up the time fuse itself to a, for a distance of about a quarter of an inch and then cut it off. And just twist it, give it a bit of a squeeze and that not only helps to <coughs> Not only helps to hold the time fuse, I can't push the time fuse in any longer, but it'll also help to fireproof it. And that's basically it. Just, just work your finger in there, push those strands of perchlorate match or whatever you want to call it down to the bottom of your bag. And that's it done. It's dark outside now, and since I don't do any operations involving flash powder inside the workshop, in the morning, I'll take all of these outside and we'll fill it up with flash powder and close the ends off.